In this presentation, we're going to talk about sigma delta A to D converters, a type of oversampling converter, and why you might want to still use a, a sharper uh, analog front end filter in front of these devices. Many data acquisition systems use a type of analog to digital converter called the sigma delta converter, and this is a type of oversampling analog to digital converter. The input sampling rate is typically 64, 128, or even 256 times um, the effective output sampling rate. So given that we have such a, a, a huge input sampling rate, it greatly simplifies the complexity of the analog filter we need to prevent aliasing. In fact, often we can get away with just a single pole, simple single pole analog filter. So after uh, oversampling the output of that analog filter, internal to the converter, there is a, a sharp uh, digital filter applied to the data. And this is an algorithm that's applied to the sampled uh, data. After the sharp digital filter is applied, um, you decimate by a, a factor of k, whatever the sample oversampling ratio was, and you end up with an output sampling rate of, of f sub s. So there's a couple problems with oversampling converters. Uh, one is, is that their huge input bandwidth uh, means that all the, the energy in the signal, the in-band plus out-band energy of the signal, is, shows up at the input of the sigma delta converter. And if the signal has lots of out-of-band energy, it can easily saturate uh, the converter. Once you saturate the converter, um, the data is, is no good for that time, plus uh, the time for that uh, saturated condition to clear out of the filter, uh, the digital filter. Another problem with this type of converter is that they generally have uh, poor transient response, and we'll talk about that in a few slides. So to emphasize the first point, the signal-to-noise ratio on the signal input must be favorable, or if it's not, if you have a lot of out-of-band energy in your signal, it will easily saturate the sigma delta converter due to its huge uh, input bandwidth. So to, to com combat that, um, you need to use a more complex filter, one that's got more poles, like a uh, the ones we've been studying, uh, the LP4 or LP8 uh, filters. The, these uh, higher order filters will act to eliminate a good deal of that out-of-band energy and allow the converter to operate without saturating on that, that large out-of-band energy. Here's uh, an example of a digital filter that's used inside of a Sigma Delta converter, in this case the Texas Instruments ADS-1274. And you can see that this uh, filter has a very flat passband uh, and extremely sharp uh, transition from passband to stop band and then a deep uh, stop band attenuation of about 100 dB. So these filters uh, are very uh, selective. Um, again, it's a digital filter, so it's, u it's uh, realized in, in an algorithm on digital data um, as opposed to using op amps and capacitors and resistors that, that we use to build analog filters. Well the step response of the ADS uh, 1274 looks like this. Um, you have quite a bit of activity as a precursor to the step function. Um, so, so lots of ringing and undershoot as a precursor to this unit step function and then when the step comes along you have overshoot and ringing. So this type of uh, transient behavior uh, in response to transient signals uh, make these converters problematic when we're dealing with shock type signals. So one thing we can do to address the the poor transient response of a sigma delta converter is to again use a higher order uh, front end analog filter such as uh, one of PFI's uh, pulse mode filters, the LP4P or the LP8P. And we can set the uh, cutoff frequency to be uh, equal to the sampling frequency divided by 10. Or in other words, sample it 10 times the 
cutoff frequency. When we do this, the uh, transfer function of the front end analog filter dominates the overall system transfer function, and the step response is dictated by the filter. And here in this uh, particular slide, we're looking at the step response of a, of a cascaded um, LP4P, four pole pulse mode um, analog filter at the front end for various uh, oversampling ratios. So for the red curve, we're only oversampling at two times the cutoff frequency of the LP4P. Um, the gold we're sampling, oversampling at four times the cutoff of the LP4P. And in the green, we're oversampling at ten times the cutoff frequency. So you can see the green trace has an extremely well-behaved uh, step response with uh, no perceivable overshoot or ringing. So this is, this is something we can do if we have a, uh, uh, a Sigma Delta analog to digital converter system. We need to make a shock measurement with it. We can't live with its uh, poor uh, transient response, overshoot, and ringing. We can apply a front-end uh, analog filter that does have very good transient response and oversample it.